Um, I'm really, really happy to be here today. So we're going to be doing a mindful movement cueing workshop and we're going to be doing all of my favorite cueing patterns with a basic bar attack class. So I love mindful fitness. I've been in this industry for a really long time. So I've been about 30 years in the industry. I used to be a ballet dancer. So mindful movement is something really, really natural to myself that I've done for a long, long time. And the past 20 years, I've had a studio in Bondi Beach where we specialize in mindful fitness. So we do Pilates classes, Pilates Reformer, Pilates Mash, Bar Attack, uh, and Pilates Arc classes here in our studio. So 20 years in Bondi Beach has been tried and tested all of these different types of methods, which I'm going to be showing you today, um, as well as being our main creator and teacher trainer for Bar Attack Bar Fitness. So we've got lots of little hints and tips to get really excited about today. Uh, just pop in the chat box at the moment. What are your favorite types of mindful movement cueing patterns. So just pop in the chat. What are your favorite ones? We're going to make it as interactive as possible today to make sure you kind of stay on the ball. So we are actually going to start today with a class. And I know that this is a little bit of a challenge for some of you possibly in that you don't have a stable bar where you are, but I want to give you lots of options. So what we're going to do is, for example, you could use um, a weights bar. You could use a balcony. So any of you that have got a balcony at home, um, that is also a really fantastic option. We are going to be using more of this kind of stable bar. And as you can see here, we've also got the elastic or resistance band attached to the ballet bar. Now this setup that I've got right here, for those of you who don't know much about bar attack, bar attack is a fusion of Pilates, bar and fitness. It's really easy and accessible for people to do. So it's not so based on ballet that the general public don't feel like they can do it. Bar attack now is in over 250 studios. We don't have any licensing fees. So it's one of those things where you could be a big fitness center or small fitness center and it's just something that you can add onto the timetable so super exciting probably lots of you might have had an experience with me in the past with bar attack so welcome I'm really happy to have everybody on board and joining me for this particular class it is going to be very basic comparatively to what we might necessarily do on a full regular basis but I really want you in essence to hear my cueing patterns and the way that I'm guiding you through all of the exercises. So it's more about um, the wording on today's practice rather than necessarily physically what I'm doing. If you are sitting at home and you're like, you know what, Renee, I don't have this set up right now, please make sure you come back and then you do the video post when we post it up today with Oz Active and you get that email with the recording. So please make sure you give this a go. It is actually a really fun workout. It's a really um, mindful, connected workout, bit of playful fun as we go through all of the exercises. Something else to also watch out for is Normally when I do a bar attack class, I'd be doing it with some music. So I'd be doing it with a 128 BPM, but for audio purposes, I'm actually not going to put on music today. So just so you know, for clarification, if you are doing it at home, you want to pop some music on, that's totally okay. You can pop some music on in the background. And I would suggest a 128 beat pattern on that. So movement patterns that I'm going to be covering today, my favorite type of movement patterns to give you an idea of a ruling which we have with bar attack and a lot of the movement patterns which I kind of teach and I love is that when it's something really quick like that 128 bpm we usually do two lots or three lots of movement cues to a rhythmical base so for example, bend, stretch, rise, lower, bend, stretch, rise, lower, bend, stretch, rise, lower. That's my movement cue to get the class already going quicker through that movement pattern. And then in a normal bar attack class, we would go a safety or an alignment cue in that class. But today we're going to play around and have a bit more fun with it. Uh, we're going to use different type of cueing. So I'm going to use today lots of imagery cueing. 
and lots of feeling cues and lots of seeing cues. So I just want to explain what I mean by that. So an imagery cue would be, for example, we're standing up, we're lengthening through the spine, we're looking down towards our feet. Make sure your feet look like a little equal sign. Okay, that would be a great example of, okay, my feet are obviously parallel, but the equal sign reference puts me in my body a little bit more and gives me a better reference to how the shape should actually look in that exercise. So when I'm referring to something else that's not actually physically what we're doing, but is an image that helps connect that person with their mind, with their body and a type of shape that they can actually relate to. So I'm gonna be doing lots of those through the class today. I'm also gonna be using feeling cues. For, so for example, we sit up and back and then we bring one foot back and we pull that thigh bone back up into the hip socket so that then we can feel that into the upper part of our glute, okay? So for me, it's a focus feeling cue. So I'm focusing that person inward to their body and focusing on a certain area that then makes them feel that exercise deeper and more in their own body. So they're getting that education of their own body at the same time. Another one which I will use through the class will be a look down at your feet. Make sure your toes are long, your feet are parallel and your knees are tracking over the toes. So to me, that is obviously a verbal cue that is going more into a visual snapshot of what's happening in your body. So I know that that's many, many examples. They're kind of some of my favorite ones, which I use through the class. Um, and again, pop in the chat, what are your favorites? You know, do you have some that you use more than others? This has been kind of quite a bit of fun for me because I use imagery cues in all of my classes, but I'm going to try and do an extreme amount of imagery cues today. So it's a nice little challenge for myself as well to have a bit of playful fun um, in this situation and through this class. So those of you who are doing the class, and I'd love all of you to do it at some stage, um, how I've got the elastic set up on the bar at the moment, just so you know, is just a normal resistance band. We're folding that resistance band in half and we're popping that resistance band underneath the ballet bar all the way through so that then we create that perfect uh, resistance and pulling pattern. In a bar attack class, it's a bar fitness class and we're known as the sweaty bar workout. We use the ballet bar as a fitness tool. So we're actually gonna rotate around the ballet bar to make sure that we're getting all of those healthy functional movement patterns through the body. So it actually becomes a total body workout. So it's really amazing actually how much you can do with a ball, a resistance band and just a stable bar. Great, so we're gonna get started with the class and something which is really exciting and I'd like to offer to all of you as well is if you can count the amount of imagery cues I use through the class and then send us an email at info at bar attack with how many imagery cues I use through the class, we will also put you in the running to win a bar attack teacher training course or one of our Pilates mat reformer or arc courses. So super exciting. Uh, make sure that you are counting or you come back and you can count out those imagery cues. Perfect. Let's get started. So I'm just going to make sure also that you guys can see me really, really well. Perfect. All right. So from here, we are going to actually grab the ball to start. And welcome to Bar Attack. Welcome to my studio, Balance Smooth in Bondi Beach. Um, it's great to have you here at lunchtime. Let's grab the ball. Pop the ball up high on the inner thighs. So you want it well above the kneecaps. We're going to come in close to the ballet bar. And now let's start with some of those cues. So feet are parallel. The toes are underneath the shadow of the ballet bar. 
do your feet look like a little equal sign? Look down toward your feet, make sure they're really parallel. Head up, chest up, lengthening through the spine. We sit back in a chair position and we come all the way back up and we sit back and we pull forward and we sit back and we pull forward. Sit back, use your arms to pull forward and sit back, lengthen up and sit back, lengthen up and sit back, lengthen up. So as we sit back, we want our shoulders to come in line with the ballet bar. And then we wanna ground down through the feet and lengthen up through the crown of the head. So I'm actively working through my legs and working through my arms to draw all the way back up. Sit back, draw back up. If you're lucky enough to have a mirror in front of you, making sure your knees are tracking over your toes and you're keeping that length through the spine. Let's hold it back, little pulses up and down. Now in this position, feel like you're sitting on a chair. So your back is completely upright. You're lengthening up through the crown of the head. We hold it here, we squash the ball and squeeze, 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 squeeze. So feeling like you're trying to deflate that ball. It shouldn't look like a ball anymore. It should look like a little oval shape. Let's get down a little lower and come up part of the way and get down a little lower and come up part of the way and get down a little lower and come up part of the way, stretching all the way up. We rise up, lower down, rise up, lower down. So you can see how those movement cues coming in, two to three movement cues. And then we're going into those other imagery cues from there. So we're gonna keep the heels up nice and high. We're gonna hold those heels up nice and high like we're wearing a kitten heel and we sit back lengthen up and sit back, lengthen up and sit back, lengthen up and sit back, lengthen up, sit back, little pulses up and down. Keeping that length through the spine, keeping that length through the torso. Can you find that chair position again? Holding it here, tiny pelvic tilt and under and out and under and out. Scooping up through your lower belly, like you're scooping out ice cream through your lower belly, under and out, and under and out, and under and out, and under and out. Stretch all the way up, lower the heels back down, stretching all the way back out. We're gonna go into a push up here. Chest forward, push away, chest forward, press away. Really grip hold of that ballet bar. Feel that pushing and pulling action. Pulling forward, pushing away. Pulling forward, pushing away. Keep that length through the spine. So feeling like we've got a rod from our heels right up through our shoulders, through the crown of the head. And we're trying to keep that rod nice and long as we come forward and we draw back. So that pelvis is going with that movement. The head and chest is going with that movement. Let's hold it forward, pulse it out. And pulse, and pulse, and pulse. Look in that mirror. If you've got one there, shoulders are drawing down away from the ears. Your elbows are pointing out to the side. Back into that push-up, pushing, pulling, pushing, pulling. From here, we roll through the feet. We sit back into a squat position. Lengthen back up, roll through the feet, come all the way forward. Sit up and back, lengthen up, draw all the way forward. Sit up and back, lengthen up, draw all the way forward. Good, finding that squat position, like we're tapping our bottom on a bench seat behind us, coming all the way forward. Tap your bottom back on that bench seat, come all the way forward. Good, those of you who want more of a strong workout today, we're gonna add a jump to the top. So we come all the way forward, all the way back, jump it up, all the way forward, all the way back, jump it up. Chest forward, sit back, jump it up at the top. Good, keep that going at your own pace. Working through the feet, working through the toes. Last one. Stay back in that squat, lengthen, squat, lengthen. Keep your knees going. We're gonna reach forward and grab the elastic. 
one elastic in each hand as you keep squatting back and up and coming into our skier squat sweep it up sweep it back sweep it up sweep it back sweep it up sweep it back sweep it up and let's go a little quicker sweep lengthen sweep lengthen feel like you're brushing those arms down beside you pitching forward through the upper body we hold it forward single triceps and back 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 elbows locked in next to you lengthening out through the crown of the head let's get down a little deeper we go down two three four and up two three four and down two three four and up two three four and down two three four and up two three four still sitting your bottom up and back pretending that you've got that bench seat behind you are your shoulders drawing down away from the ears can you reach through that elastic even more to feel that working into your upper back come all the way down palms together we go chop and pull and chop and pull and chop and pull and chop and pull sorry guys hopefully you can still hear me and chop and pull and chop and pull and chop and pull and chop and pull and we go two chops chop chop switch chop chop switch chop chop switch so try and chop across the thigh sit back a little further lengthen out through the crown of the head pull and chop across your thighs so you're feeling that twist into your obliques into your waist chop chop switch chop chop switch chop chop switch last couple last one stretch it all the way up from here release the elastic toe taps to the side tap 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 good we're going to start to turn that around start to reach the arms up above the head reach 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 find that length through the spine stretch up through the arms those of you who can we start into a little star jump open in open in open in open in open in last couple last one bring it back in from here we open the feet and close and open and close look down towards your feet we want to try and open them up in a little v shape and close and open and close and open and close chest stays lifted shoulders stay open and back we're finding that little pilates v or that first position of the feet using the upper part of the thigh the upper part of the leg now from here we open it up we rise up we pop the ball in between our heels and we squeeze those heels together we come into our little diamond shape through the legs and stretch and plie and stretch and plie and stretch and plie and stretch so can you find that diamond shape through your legs find that diamond lengthen up find that diamond lengthen up squeeze through the inner thighs lengthen up through the crown of the head hold it here pulse it out bring that hand onto your hip head up chest up heels are lifted tiny pelvic tilt and under and out and under and out and under and out feel that scoop up through the lower belly like we were doing earlier that little scoop of ice cream out through the lower belly lengthen out scoop and lengthen scoop and lengthen come back to that neutral position and butterfly the thighs back 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 so think of your thighs like little butterfly wings can you push them open 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 now keep them open find that diamond shape again and butterfly just that right thigh back back 
back, back, back. Just that right thigh. Staying as stable as you can. And other side, push it open, 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 open. Good, I hope you guys are keeping count with those imagery cues so far. And double butterfly, back, 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 back. Feeling that intensity to try and stabilize through the body. Your heels are pressing into that ball so we don't put too much excess pressure on the knees. Stretch all the way up, lower the heels, lift the heels, lower the heels, lift the heels. Now squeeze through the inner line of the leg. Squeeze, lift, squeeze, lift, squeeze, lift. Keep lengthening through your whole body. Can you stretch up a little taller? Can you lengthen a little more? Last couple. And from here, we reach down, we grab the ball, we pop the heels together and we come into our tondu. So we go point and squeeze, point and squeeze, point and squeeze. Then we start to go a little quicker. So we go in and in and in and in and in. So a tondu, when translated from French, which is a ballet way of saying things, into English means to stretch. So let's really try and lengthen and squeeze, 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 squeeze. Hold the leg out and we lift up, 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 into our little PKs. So feeling like you've got hot coals on the floor and you're trying to lift up, 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 away from those hot coals. And from here we go, point, plie, point, close and point, plie, point, close and point, plie, point, close and point, plie, point, close. Really drag the foot along the floor on the way back in now. Squeeze in. Feel that that connects more into your inner thighs as you drag back in. Point, plie, 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 pulse it out here. Bring those arms out in front of you. Keep that length up through the crown of the head. From here, we lift one heel up and pulse two three, four, switch it over, pulse, two, three, four, switch it over, good, let's bring those heels up a little higher to more of that stiletto heel height, pulse for two, switch, pulse for two, switch, getting that mobility through the feet as you're doing those pulses, up and down, switch it over, up and down, switch it over, Finding that length through the spine, finding that length through the torso. Hold it down, we lift both heels up and push down. Push down, double heel lift. Feel like you've got oranges underneath your heels and you're trying to squash the juice out of the oranges as you push the heels down. Those of you doing the class, you should be starting to feel a little bit sweaty through these ones. Lifting up, pressing down, controlling that movement through your ankles and your feet. Push the heels down. We slide from one side to the other side. One side, other side, one side, other side. Like you're sliding across a bench seat. Where's your bench seat? Can you keep your bottom on it? Let's go a little quicker and slide, slide, slide slide and coming into a pivot lunge pivot lunge back to second position and pivot lunge back to second position and pivot lunge back to second position pivot lunge pulse it out here bend that back knee come a little more upright through your upper body look at your front foot make sure your knees are tracking over your toes rotate the upper body and spiral and center, spiral and center, spiral and center, spiral and center. Really feel that twisting through the waist. 
like you're wringing out through a wet towel. So you're wringing out through the center and back and wring out through the center and draw it back. Get down a little lower, head up, chest up. Last one, step all the way back. Pop that ball up high on the inner thighs, reach back, grab your resistance band. From here, let's get down nice and low in that position and we're boxing and box and box and box. Feel that extension through the arm. Get down a little lower if you can. Knees are tracking over the toes. Squeeze into that ball a little more. And two boxes, box, box, and box, and box. Feel that twist through the center of the body, reaching out through the arms, stretching out through the arms. Can you squeeze that ball a little more so it doesn't look like a ball anymore? So it looks like a little egg, a little egg coming into Easter. And hold it here. We hug it out. We go open, hug, open, hug, open, hug. Reaching across, reaching across, reaching across. And two boxes, box, 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 box. Keep that length through the spine. Keep that length through your torso. And then we hug it out and open, hug, hug. Hug. As we're hugging here, we're squashing into the ball and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Keeping that length through the spine, keeping that length through the torso. Feel like you're hugging that big tree in front of you and hug, hug, hug. Feel that as you transfer that weight onto the balls of the feet, you're getting more of that core connection. And then sweep the arms down, reach the arms up and forward, stretch even further forward into a little diving maneuver here. Let's feel like we're diving into a swimming pool and drawing back and diving forward and drawing back and diving forward and drawing back. Thinking about that swimming pool in front of you. You're trying to reach out into it and draw back. Reach out into it and draw back and reaching all the way out, coming all the way back up. And let's try some different variations to the other side. So from here, we open the feet, close the feet, open the feet, close the feet. So in a bar tech base class, you would normally on the other side repeat, but I'm gonna do a few different variations on this side just to give you a little bit of a different understanding, two different ones. Making sure we look down to the feet. We're finding that little V position as we open and close, open and close, open and close. Open the feet to that little V, rise up, pop the ball in between your heels and we come into a plie and stretch and plie and stretch. Now, like we did on the other side, find that diamond shape through the leg. Find that length up through the torso. And hold it down, little pulses. And we're gonna bring our hips from one side, the other side, one side, other side. So little booty hips from side to side. Feel that little brooding out through the hips, that length through the spine, that length through the torso. And now from here, we hold that neutral position for a moment and we circle the hips around. And around. And around. And around like you're stirring a pot through your pelvis. And do the nose circles around. And we are keeping that beautiful diamond shape through the legs. Find more length up through the spine. Stretch it all the way up. Lower the heels, lift the heels, lower the heels, lift the heels. Let's go a little quicker than what we did on the other side. Let's add a bit of a quarter bra up and around. Up and around and up and around, reaching down, grab the ball, pop those heels together. We go into our tondu and point and squeeze, point and squeeze, point and squeeze. 
Remember that tondu means to stretch. So we're trying to stretch out and squeeze in. Use your inner thighs, drag that foot along the floor. Holding it out, little PK up, 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 up. Remembering those hot coals on the floor. Stretching our supporting leg. We go point, plie, point, close, point, plie, point, close, point, plie, point, close. Let's hold it out here. Little pulses. From here, we're going to skip that little Haka series that we did on the other side. We're going to go straight to our pivot. Lunge, back to second position and pivot. Lunge, back to second position. Pivot, lunge, little pulses. Adjust your front foot to parallel. Bring that ball in line with your belly button. Spiral the upper body and back and spiral and back and spiral and back. Can you bend that back knee and get down even deeper? That's it. Feel like you're a coil and you're spiraling that coil up towards the ceiling as you do that rotation around. Last couple. Last one. Spiral it all the way around towards the belly bar. Pop that ball down. Let's grab your elastic again. We're stepping one foot forward, one foot back. We're sweeping the arms back and forward and back and forward. We've got that heel and the crown of the head in one long line. And now from here, we start to hinge forward, tap the toes, hinge forward, tap the toes. So we're finding that beautiful arabesque alignment behind us, lengthening out through the crown of the head, transferring forward, tapping back, transferring forward, tapping back. Hold it back, little pulses back, 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 back. And triceps bend, push, push, push. Can you lengthen your back leg even more? Can you point all the way down to your toes? So you've got this sense of lengthening from the crown of the head all the way down to that back foot. Bend that supporting leg, get down even deeper. So the higher my leg goes at the back, the more I wanna hinge forward. So I'm not overextending my lumbar spine. Last two, last one, coming all the way back up, switching sides, swap it over, sweep the arms back and forward and back and forward. Have the palms towards each other. So you're chopping those arms back, chop back and forward, chop back and forward, chop back and forward. Start to lift the back leg and up and tap and up and tap and up. And tap. Good. Those of you that aren't physically doing the class, type in the chat. What's your favorite imagery cue so far? Have you got a favorite? Or do you want to wait and make up another one for something like our plies? Perfect. Let's hold it forward. Triceps. Bend. Push back. Push back. Push back. Now let's concentrate on that back leg. Can you point out through that back leg? Can you turn that back leg out into a beautiful ballet arabesque at the back? Now let's hinge forward. Lift that back leg up a little higher. And drink all the way back up, stepping out to a wide second position. We go into a row and stretch, row and stretch. Staying completely upright. Shaving those elbows in next to you lengthening up through the crown of the head and a row with those elbows out, elbows out, lengthen, elbows out, lengthen, elbows out, lengthen. Feel like you're sliding up and down in a hot toaster. Okay, sorry, I don't want you to burn your bum or your chest on that toaster as you're drawing down and you're coming back up. Great, keep that going. Sorry, keep you losing these. Keep losing these ear pods today. They're a little bit big. All the way down, all the way up. Hold it down, reach the arms out. We chop back and release, chop back and release, chop back and release. So we're reaching out in that reverse fly, lengthen out even further so you can feel that into your upper back. 
reach the arms back, little chops, back, 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 back. Lengthen a little more through your torso. Get down a little deeper. Last two, last one. Coming all the way back up, great work. You're gonna grab that ball again, grabbing that ball, bringing it behind the back thigh. From here, we bring the knee in towards our chest and we sit back and lengthen up and sit back and lengthen up. Good, really pressing that thigh behind the body, lengthening up, behind the body, lengthening up. As you pitch forward, track your knees over your toes, draw all the way up. As you pitch forward, track the knees over the toes and then lengthen back up. And press all the way back, little pulses up, 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 up. Keep the back leg lifted, we bend the supporting leg. So try and feel that there's something behind you like a wall or a chair. You're trying to tap your tailbone back towards it. So we've got this elongation through the torso, through the spine as we're sitting back and up and sitting back and up and then sitting back and up. Bring it all the way in so those knees come together. We go out to the side, up and around, back out to the side and in. Out to the side, up and around, back out to the side and in. So feeling like that thigh is going up and over a tabletop, there is a slight lift of the hip to be able to bring that leg in to that lift up and around and behind and draw it back in and out and up and around and draw it back in and out and around and draw it back in and up and around holding that little attitude position little pulses up 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 bend that supporting leg get down a little deeper you can do this coming all the way back up shake out that side switching it over to the other side, bringing that ball behind the thigh, lifting all the way up, and we sit back, we lengthen up, and we sit back, and we lengthen up, and we sit back, and we lengthen up. That's it, getting into that hinging action, pushing that thigh up and behind you, glancing down to that supporting foot and leg, Making sure your knees are tracking over your toes. Sitting your tailbone up and back behind you, lengthening up. And sitting up and back behind you, and lengthening up. Sitting up and back, and lengthening up. Last couple. Last one, let's hold it back. Bring that leg in and back, in and back. Now let's hold it back. Little pulses, bend that supporting leg. Bend, bend. Bend, good, keep that moving. Stay leaning forward, you've got this. Glutes and hamstrings starting to burn on that supporting leg. Bring the knees together, we lift that leg up and around. In, up and around, up and in. Coming into that beautiful ballet attitude, up and around and out to the side. Maneuvering that leg up and behind you like you're trying to kick somebody beside you and draw it back in. So up, my imaginary friend beside me and drawing back in. And up and around and drawing back in. And up and around, little pulses. Get down a little deeper, get down a little further. Keep pressing up through that back thigh. And drawing all the way back up. Pop that ball up high on the inner thighs. Let's finish off with some of our push-ups here. Pushing and pulling, finding that long plank line, feeling that we've got that strong core connection, pushing, pulling, pushing, pulling. Can you feel that you've got that tight belt around the center of your waist? And you keep tightening that belt. One push up, one squat back, lengthen up. One push up, one squat back, lengthen back up. Almost there. If you want to add in a little jump, add in a little jump. That's it, chest all the way forward. 
Lengthen up through the spine, working through the feet, working through the toes. Toe tap to the side. Let's face towards each other. Reaching the arms up above the head. Reaching through those fingertips. And jump it out. Open in, open in, open in. Last couple. Last one. And draw it all the way back in. Great work from here. We're going to come into a little quad stretch. Into our glute stretch. Pitching forward. Pressing the thigh out. Coming up and over the top. Stretching it out. Bring the hand down. Spoof around. And turning to the other side. Coming into that quad stretch. Into Quick stretch into that side stretch up and over. Bring that hand down, scoop and pull away. And drawing back through the center. Great work. We are all done with that class for today. Sorry for those interruptions. Sometimes tech can get the better of us. If you'd like to do another class with me, please send us an email at info at bar attack. I'm happy to run another free class for those guys that have still stuck on board this call and actually got to miss out. So um, if you do want to do that full workout, I'm happy to repeat something like that or something similar or something completely different if that's your request. Um, but thank you for Oz Active for getting us to hang in there um, and getting us back up online as soon as they could. If you've got any questions, please type it into the chat. I'm happy to have a chat now about some urgent questions. Those of you who were able to get those imagery cues, uh, make sure that then um, you send us an email and we put you in the competition to win one of our bar attack or our Pilates courses. If you haven't already, make sure that you join us at, at bar attack and at body my story by Renee Scott. So I'll answer some of those questions now. Please type into the chat if you've got some questions that you'd like for myself. A little bit hot and sweaty in this room, so hopefully you're feeling that at home. You've just done that workout too. Yeah, you did. You did great, Renee. And sorry about the the glitch in the middle there. Um, I think one of the I'll just quickly point out one of the questions was just what's your email address uh, for people to contact you on? Yes, that would be amazing. So it's info at barattack.com. So I can get Sam to pop that in the chat as well, but it's info at barattack.com. Um, and if you are trying to find me, you can find me in actually multiple locations, but the main locations to find me would be um, www.bodymystory.com um, and www.barattack.com. If you want to join me for classes in Sydney, my studio is Balance Moves Pilates and Bar Studio in Bondi Beach. So I'd love, I still teach classes on a regular basis. So I'm here usually uh, three days a week, absolute minimum. Um, and I love teaching. I love teaching. I'm passionate about mindful fitness. So I always love having teachers coming in and I can do lots of hands-on kind of corrections and hands-on alignment cues. It's kind of some of my favorite things to do. So um, I'm so happy that all of you could join me and I'm grateful that you could join me on your lunch breaks. I'm sure that you're probably going to teach some afternoon shifts now. But as I say, any questions, uh, pop it in the chat. Happy to stay on board. Any questions so far? So Melissa asked, I'm not familiar with the term mindful movement, and this is one of the reasons I've joined today. Could you please give an explanation? Yep, Dan, can you still hear me okay there? So what was that, Renee? Um, can you still hear me on your end? Yep, yep, you're still you're still all live. Yep. Yeah, okay, perfect. Sorry, I can't hear anything through my earpods here. So um, there was a question about mindful fitness. What is mindful fitness? So really mindful fitness is about the connection of the body and the mind. So that can be done in various ways. It can be done with breath work connection to the body. Um, so for example, breathing work to connect you to your body itself. So whether that be 
hands onto the rib cage. Inhale, you're expanding out through the lungs. Exhale, you're closing in. Feel your rib cage closing in. If, for example, I was doing something like lateral breath work to get that mind body connection. Another really great way is also getting people to visually look at their bodies. So it's about people and us in general, instead of kind of thinking about external things, it's about being in the moment at that time. So the tools that we use to do that or the cueing patterns that we're working on today, we're cueing patterns that are helping us as a studio, as a business, as a class, keep everybody's minds connected to the actual movements that they're doing. So very, very often what tends to happen is our daily life is so, so busy and we're running so fast with all these things that we need to do. Mindful movement to connect the mind and body means that as you're going through the actual movement and ideally progressing through things in the class that you're doing, um, when we're talking about this type of environment, um, should keep connecting you back into your body, into your room. So what I mean by that is how you're feeling, what you can see your body doing, what and how you can move deeper into an exercise to feel that exercise more. So in doing those types of cues, you're making sure they're not basically thinking about their shopping list or where they're going to have coffee after class. Okay, so it's really, really important to find that baseline as a person and for your body. And so it's really just trying to be connected in the now. And that's really what mindful fitness is about. Um, and mindful cueing patterns are about is how can we bring everybody into this moment and keep them connected in this moment to like re-energize the body. Um, so hopefully that's answering your question. I think it has. Long, long way of answering it, but that's how I see it from a, a fitness perspective. But there are lots of other ways that you can also um, connect in mindful ways to your body, whether that be um, meditation or walking on sand or glass or swimming in the ocean. So there's other types of mindful kind of movement and mindful connection other than what kind of I've expressed today through the class. A lot of people are saying the webinar was really inspirational. It was the best webinar they ever attended. Uh, thank you so much for the great cues. Can we use the back of a chair for a lot of these for older adults? Yeah, so, okay, good, qu fantastic questions. Um, and thanks for all the wonderful feedback. I really, really appreciate it. I love this and I'm passionate about it. So hopefully that shines through in what I do. Um, can you use a chair? Yes, you can use a chair, but actually using um, a ballet bar or a kind of like a weight bench where it's locked in where you do your squats, having something that's stable is actually safer than something like a chair. So just be mindful, even though it appears that this would be more unstable than a chair, actually it's much more stable than a chair. Um, and you could see with the movement patterns that we were doing in bar attack, I was doing lots of pushing and pulling action. So obviously with a chair, that wouldn't be a viable option. But in bar attack, we do have lots of the exercises can be adapted to places that don't necessarily have a stable bar. So all of our exercises when you go through our training programs can have the option, I'll say, okay, this is what you do with a stable bar. And this is what you do with an unstable bar or a chair. So we do kind of cover all of that off because I think that it's really important to be versatile. So we want to be able to give our clients what they need in any type of environment possible. So we have lots of people coming through our courses that use them for rehabilitation or they use them with their clients um, in a group class setting or a PT session setting. So lots of physiotherapists coming through our course and using all of these exercises in a slower formatting to make sure that they can do lots of rehabilitation with their clients too. So extremely versatile. It is all like functional fitness. So it is all of those things of, you know, making sure that we're, we're truly kind of connecting and giving people a stronger body, stronger mind, and I think essentially like the most amazing and the best thing out of all of this is we're all in the fitness industry trying to make people feel good, right? So if they feel good and they feel better 
when they're walking out of your environment and having a class of you, that translates then to their family, to their friends, the environment around them. You know, so I think it's we're in such a wonderful profession that we actually have this really uh, positive vibe, which we can give people and essentially pass on. Um, and I think that that's really important. I think all of you can, even if that's just what you take away from today, is that, you know, you're all doing a great job. Keep keep sharing that positive energy. Keep getting people moving because it actually just makes them feel better. Um, and that's what we're here for. Perhaps some people are asking about your courses and if they're only available in Sydney. Um, my courses are actually available everywhere so um, if you wanted to have a private training I travel for a private training I can do workshops in and out of Brisbane Melbourne New Zealand wherever you are I can kind of fly in and out from your venue um, as well as you can do all of my courses solely online if you'd like to and or we have got the option also that you can log in virtually um, and we won't have any tech issues I promise um, you can log in virtually and do the actual course with me live so it's interactive like this and we talk to each other as we go through the course so we've got so many options you can find those options on bodymystory.com or you can send me an email at info at baratac.com so they're my two main kind of training companies and training hubs Body My Story is the umbrella brand of Bar Attack and all of my Pilates courses. And then Bar Attack is a well-known brand now in the fitness industry that is in lots of, you know, your main clubs and boutique fitness centers as well. So um, go into info at barattack.com, send me an email. We'll get back to you within the next 48 hours for sure. Um, and if you want to check out lots of the courses that I'm offering, you can go to bodymaestro.com. So B-O-D-Y-M-A-E-S-T-R-O.com. Uh, will you be coming to Adelaide or different cities to do a live class? to do my live class look I'm open to opportunity <laughs> um, I've been doing this for a long time I do have two young children and a husband but um, I am open to travel so um, you know you could possibly send me opportunity um, but I will promise to do some free free kind of workshops and webinars and things like that I think growth in the fitness industry is really really important so if you send us an email we'll put you on our email list and then it can also show you when I'm doing some free workshops or bits and pieces or we do have actually our next teacher training coming up in May for Bar Attack so the, the date's already set um, you get one day of full training with me plus another half day of full training for coaching you um, through the different ways that you're teaching so um, learning the method then you get an online portal that has all the information there that you can revise um, and then you come back and then we do a workshop together on your teaching for a day. Okay, last two questions. How many people would you have in a bar attack class? Yeah, great question. How many people would I have in a bar attack class? Um, I'd say my maximum that I personally like to teach is um, 25 to 30 max, although I have taught at Phylex before, I think with 100 people in the room. So um, it really depends. Are you teaching the general public or are you teaching instructors? If I'm teaching instructors, obviously I can leave the room a lot easier because um, they're very body aware and they're aware of how they should be moving themselves in space. So I can have a lot bigger amount. Um, but if I'm actually teaching classes, I personally, um, in our studio, we have 22 people max in a class. Um, and that's just to make sure, number one, I'm in Bondi Beach, so real estate is pricey, uh, but also I want to make sure that I get enough hands-on corrections with that class. It doesn't feel too overwhelming for everybody that there's too many people in the space. So that's a personal kind of thing of my own. Um, so I'd say if you're at a fitness studio, probably 25, 30 max would be probably what I'd suggest. Do um your bar attack courses give you cc's yes yes our bar attack 
classes and courses um, give you lots of CECs. So you can gain up to, I think it's 25 CECs with our courses because all of our advanced courses are qualified for CECs as well. So our main Bar Attack Foundation course is just being revised right now because it's a hybrid course now. So we've actually got C, uh, 11 CECs currently, but it's probably going to be up to about um, 15 to possibly 18 just for our base course. And then you've got another five advanced modules that you can do and you can basically gain all your CECs for the requirement over your two years just from doing bar attack. So it is very exciting. Okay. Active. Very last question. How long does the live bar attack course go for? The live bar attack course. Okay. The live face-to-face -face is going to be about eight to 10 hours of us spending time together for that particular day. And then when you come back and you do the workshop and the exam, it's about five to six hours of coaching during that period of time. And then you've got all the online portal, which is there to refresh if you'd like to refresh it. So that's not a compulsory component, but it's something that we recommend because there's lots of um, classes in that, like there's another five kind of classes in that, which are me teaching you through a class and then showing you how to teach those classes as well as um, the formatting of how we format a bar attack class as well. Um, uh, what is the cost of the bar attack training? So the bar attack teacher training, if you are going to do it live face-to-face, -face, the foundations course, the exam, and the online portal, it's $1,495 for everything. So that's going to give you over uh, 15 CECs when you complete that course. So that includes the full day of training, it includes the full online portal, everything you could possibly need to start and be really successful with bar training courses. Um, and also there's lots of discounts to if you do want to just do the online portal only, that comes down to uh, 995 for just the online portal. So $995 if you just want to do the online portal component or otherwise 1495 if you want the face-to-face -face learning component as well. So we also do, for those of you who are kind of interstate, we do have lots of people just flying in and flying out for those days as well because it's very cost-effective to also do things that way if you want to have that really interactive face-to-face -face experience, which I know all of us are craving.